My guest in the Toyota Solutions studio now is Hafsat Abiola Costello, uh, whose story really started with tragedy, but I would say you've really made something out of what's happened. Um, both of your parents paid the ultimate sacrifice for speaking out politically. Your father is the first democratically elected president of Nigeria and died in jail. Your mother is the head of the democracy movement there, and she was assassinated. Um, how have you carried on their legacy? I've been working um, since they died to see how we can get women to continue to come out, to continue to take responsibility for recreating the space that we call Nigeria. Often, you know, Nigerian people think, oh, the woman should be in the house, she should be cooking, she should look after the children. And women do those things, but I think that they have a bigger responsibility to their families than just to stay at home. Because the country is right now completely overrun by corruption. It affects whether when you go to hospital you'll find medicine in the hospital. It affects whether you'll be able to get a place in a school. You could get the score, you could be qualified to um, be given a place in a, in a university, but somebody else will pay money without the qualifications and will take your place. Again, the corruption. It's the corruption. And the corruption is losing Nigeria billions of dollars every year. Nigeria is not a poor country. It does not need to have this kind of situation. And it's the largest oil producer in Africa. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we also have the largest amount of gas. If, you, if we start to list the resources in Nigeria, we'll be here for all day. We have so much resources. It's just that it's not well allocated. People use the power of the public office and just divert it to help themselves and their families and their cronies. But what about the 180 million people in Nigeria? Which is why we have at this time about 50% in dire poverty living on less than $2 a day. Uh, uh, yeah. We have one of the highest rates of women dying when they give birth. Yeah. As, as, it, as we are now, we have 1.8 million people facing famine in northeast Nigeria. All of these are problems of governance. So if these are problems of governance, where should the most precious resource that we have, where should it be? Our women, where should they be? They should be there. Yeah. You see, we, we criticize the men. We say, oh, what are they doing? They're doing this badly or that badly. I'm, I'm so not interested in making complaints. You know, as a wife, my husband knows, I'm never interested in nagging my husband about things. And he knows that that makes me even more dangerous because I will take action, you know, and as a citizen of Nigeria, oh, you are not doing this, you are not doing this. If I can do it better, why am I not there to do it better? I'm telling women, if, it's, if this shoe pinches, then you change the shoe. You take responsibility and change it. And that's what we've been saying to women in Nigeria at the local government level. OK, you don't want to run for national office. No problem. Local government level where the schools are funded, the schools are funded where, you know, all the big water, whether we have clean water is from the pipes that has um, sunk at local government level, go to that level. Yeah. Be in that decision making table. When they're wanting to divert the money, you protect the money for the poor. Somebody when, has to when do it. When are you going to run for office? Because you are the voice, you have the experience, um, your parents, some of that must have rubbed off on you. I can see that it did. Will you run for political office? You know, I think that um, you have to, you either are going to step up or you should just as well get out. That's how I feel. And yes, I'm definitely going to run for office. I just have to figure out how, because in Nigeria, so much money is needed to run for office. And how do I mobilize the resources? But all this is nonsense. We don't say, how do I do this? First, you commit, you are going to do it, and we figure it out. And that's, I'm definitely committed that any, because I have no problem with the idea of women exercising power. I have no hang -ups. I mean, there's some women that do, but I actually think that the key is that you as a woman must refuse to be caged, and then you will never see another woman as a threat. But once you yourself has accepted to be compromised and caged and belittled and diminished, then you'll start fighting every other woman to try to pull her down to where you are. You know, so I never, I, 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 all women, I think we're in this together. We should fight together and we should take responsibility, not just for me in Nigeria. We should take responsibility for the world. Is this a world that you think is in a good situation? Which country can we really say is doing well? 
every woman everywhere is required to step forward now and do what is necessary to make the world a better place. That, that's a great point. Um, but I do want to highlight some of the issues that are specific to women in your country because I know that you have started um, an organization named after your mother. Can you talk about the Kudarat Initiative for Democracy and how it is helping women and addressing local problems in Nigeria? In February, all the women in southwest Nigeria, that's six states, we gathered the women in politics, we gathered together and began to develop a strategy. We call it a sponsorship platform. How do we get women into elective office? Because right now, many of us in the Southwest, we don't have a problem getting appointments. In my state, we're 30% mm -hmm. of the cabinet in appointed wow. positions. Yes, it's good. It's not good enough because we want also to be at least, why, why 30%, 50 percent in elective positions. What about at the federal level, the national level? At the federal level, I think the current government is maybe 20 percent women, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. They could be better. But the legislature is 8 percent women hmm. or 7 percent. I mean, it's never above 8 percent, hmm. which is utterly ridiculous. Because when it was time to, when we were fighting for democracy, the Nigerian women were there in the forefront with the men. Our women control markets. They would shut down the market to protest the military. They were on the streets. Women journalists were writing. They were jailed. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for us to exercise power. Then the men take it as if it's their right. No, no, no. No. You see, if we're exercising power so that you can be stealing, okay, if you want that to be your right, no problem. But in the one of the poorest countries with one of so many poor people, we can't allow you to have this privilege. Your privilege is costing our people their lives. So it's a privilege we cannot afford. So we have to change that dynamic. And so we sat together and started to develop a way, a strategy. Because our Nigerians, you have to come if you've never been. It's one of the craziest places in the country, in the world. They're really crazy. Nigerians, if you start a song, if you play, if you play it long enough, it will go all over the country. If you start something, Nigerians will be like, oh, what is this? But if you keep, keep, keep at it, after a while, everybody in the country will mobilize around this thing you started. So we said, let us use the media. Let us use musicians. Let us use actors. You know, we have Nollywood, like Hollywood, oh. but the Nigerian version, Nollywood. Let us use them. Let them promote this message yeah. that it is time for women as well. Mm -hmm. If we start now, the next election is 2019. Okay. We will have a breakthrough. So we've already started in the Southwest, and we're now sharing this um, plant with other women in the East, in the North, in the center of the country. You look at the issue of famine, which is going to affect, is, um, the UN is saying that 1.8 million Nigerians are threatened by famine. Wow. Now when you go to the, this is in Northeast Nigeria, because of Boko Haram, yeah. the gorillas were there attacking um, communities. The communities left the farms and ran away. Mm -hmm. So now they're all of them in camps. And the military has been able to force the um, gorillas um, away mm -hmm. to escape. but. Now, to get the people back to the farm so they can farm, we're going to have a period that we will not have enough food. And it's, and it's going to impact about 1.8 million people in Nigeria. So when you go to the camps, we get food supplies brought into the camps. The men take over the food supplies, then use it like a currency to start controlling women. So you have a lot of young women in the camps who are then impregnated. A man marries her. You know, in, um, divorce can be very fast in Islam. I divorce you said three times is the end of the marriage. Mm -hmm. So once he, the man has used this woman and he finds that she's pregnant, he just announces that he has divorced her three times. The divorce is final. She's now by herself. He has gone off. Another guy comes, tries to take advantage of this girl, all because they control food yeah. in the oh. camps. So this is not even real wealth. This is not your wealth. It's coming from aid aid contributions, where you, because you're stronger, you've taken control. So uh. what Nigerians have to understand, and I think it's actually a metaphor for the rest of the world, mm -hmm. is that we can have these kinds of male privilege, or we can have a good society, but we cannot have both. Mm -hmm. You see, if, 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 we, if we face this male privilege front and center, and protect those women and make sure that the food is equitably distributed, the men won't have the currency that they're using to control women, but they will have the camps will be well run. Would we have 1.8 million facing poverty? It's hard to imagine how you, you wouldn't. would. Yeah. You wouldn't. And, if, and so, again, if you think about it, also the women should go to the farms. If they allowed the women to farm as the men are farming, would we have? We would have so much more food. We would have well, twice the number. I want amount to talk about solutions to some of the. You've brought up so many problems in what you just said. So, just taking, for example, women farming, allowing women to farm, that's a solution. Yes. Right? 
is why isn't that happening? Oh, it's happening. In my organization, we're doing a lot now. What we do, we look at big companies, mm -hmm. take Unilever, they need starch. We can produce starch from something in Nigeria that we have called cassava. I don't yeah. know if you know cassava. Yes, cassava root. Yes. Yeah. So we train the women to meet the demand of this um, producer and they earn more money. So actually the Japanese government is the one helping fund this for us in oh, Toyota so, and Japan. So, yeah. so your organization <laughs> is involved with training women to farm. That's the yes, solution. Yes, because yeah. many times they do a lot of um, extension services to farmers to train them to be able to farm. But when they go, they check what, when the men farmers are there to, tra to be trained, mm -hmm. they don't check the women's schedule. And women, because they're farming, they're also taking care of families, they're going to fetch water. Right. Many times they're not there. Maybe they've gone to fetch water. So we, KIND, and other organizations like ours, we're focusing on women. Yeah. We make ourselves flexible. What is the schedule of the women? Because women, what women are, more than the fact that they're economically poor, is that they're time poor. Their time yeah, is so allocated. Everywhere. So, but we have to be willing to accommodate them. Yes. When we accommodate them, then they solve many problems. So we, we've been working with them because we know, we understand. Africa, in the whole continent of Africa, women are 60% of the food producers. Mm. If you train them, improve their, their skills, improve their productivity, give them support, give them access to credit, yeah. is that a continent that will even know anything about poverty or food? Would it, is it a continent that would know anything about, about hunger? Mm. You will be able to be eating our delicious fruits and vegetables from Nigeria. You, you would be blessed. So this, this possibility is what is driving us in Nigeria, that let mm -hmm. us focus on the women. The women are our strength. Yes, men are also strong, but these women that have been so ignored, so maligned, so exploited, so abused, let us take them and nurture them and give them the rights and the respect that they deserve and let us see a whole continent flourish. Hafsfad, uh, I imagine your parents are so proud of the work um, that you've done and, and the voices that you've raised. Um, it's really a pleasure to have been able to speak to you about the solutions to these problems. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you.